Coming up on this episode of SIVA TV, we prevent the spread of bacteria, perform CPR, and ride our bikes safely. Stay tuned for all this and more on SIVA TV. and welcome to SIVA TV. My name is Kelly Caps. We have an exciting show for you today that will definitely be good for your health and safety. Let's start the show off with a message about texting while driving. A key step to combating anxiety is being able to recognize it. Producers Ruth and Ruby explored different forms of anxiety to bring awareness to the issue, as well as offering a few solutions to assist others who are in need of help. Hi, my name is Ruth Mary Shackelford. My name is Ruby Varan. I attend Sutter Middle School. And the name of my documentary is More Than What Meets the Surface. So basically the idea of the video is to bring light to anxiety among teens. My role in the production was a producer and a narrator. I was the filmer and the editor. My favorite part was definitely one of our last shots where we wrote out like all the things that people with anxiety hear, things like you're overreacting or calm down, and it just felt kind of good to write it down. 
I think video is an amazing thing because you can use it to teach people things, you can use it to make people laugh. A lot of people without anxiety, they have no idea about it and so I just think that it's important that we bring light to it so kids with anxiety and without anxiety know how to deal with it and know what it is. This may seem like any other 8th grade classroom with any other normal group of kids, but really, that's not the case. Mental health among teens is a rising issue, especially anxiety. Anxiety is when you have a fear response in your body that is kind of a bit of a misfire. It's used as a protective factor, however, it's not accurately telling us what's going on in the world. It's telling us that there's danger that's not actually there. Anxiety varies from kid to kid. For some it isolates, and for others, it changes how they look at the world. It can stem from stressful or traumatic situations, or is inherited from past generations. It's hard to tell others about one's mental health, especially if people don't know about it or understand it. Anxiety stresses a person when they don't actually have the need to be stressed. This is why reassurance is a need for those with anxiety. To stand there, waiting without asking, or getting them a surprise gift can definitely do something. During really low points for a person, their anxiety can trick them if no one is there to reassure them. It can make the whole world seem like it's going by without you, and you don't need to be in it. If you start to look hard in a classroom, you start to see signs of anxiety such as twitching, rapid heartbeat, procrastination, headaches, cramps, and more. If a child can find someone else with anxiety, life becomes a lot easier. Someone understands you. However, negative influences from past generations make it hard for this current generation to tell others. What has to do with, um, doesn't it have to do with getting like nervous when you do certain things? Um, do, you, do you know anything else? No. Um, it's something in your head and you get kind of nervous or something. Okay, what do you know about anxiety, really? I don't really know anything. Uh, I think anxiety is like being nervous. I also think so. Um, I don't really know what anxiety is. Stress or some other factor causing it. I think it's just normal because there's so many things that can cause it and that will cause it that they shouldn't be overlooked. Usually between the time when somebody starts feeling anxiety and the, until the time that they receive treatment is around eight to ten years. So there's a lot of people out there that are suffering having these issues without getting the help that they need. The LGBTQ community, they're twice as likely to suffer from a mental health issue including anxiety. Anxiety is classified into five main types. There's generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, social anxiety, specific phobias, obsessive compulsive disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. So many children, especially teens, suffer from anxiety. Awareness must be spread. Let's erase all signs of stigma and ignorance in order to help all those who suffer with anxiety. This is what really helps with anxiety. Grounding, which helps you calm down by taking recognition of your surroundings. Also, one way to help anxiety is to learn how to help someone through a panic attack. See?
there's more than what meets the surface. hold thousands of little bacteria and germs that can spread to others if you aren't careful? Next up, we will witness the spread of bacteria from person to person. The students are currently on their computers. The computer spreads to bacteria and germs, which can lead to illnesses. On a normal school day, everybody must wash their hands before they go to recess. So this is how a student should wash their hands. Uh oh, she's refusing to wash her hands. And you're it! I'm it! No! Ha, she's never gonna find us here. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha, got you guys. Ha ha, you're it! Um, I don't see anything. Do you see? Mm, no. Hmm, she must be tagging someone else. Gotcha! Let's see what would happen if she did wash her hands. And you're it! I'm it! No! Ha, she's never gonna find us here. Yeah. Ha ha, got you guys. Yeah. Ha ha, you're it! Um, I don't see anything. Do you see? Mm, no. Hmm, she must be tagging someone else. Gotcha! When it comes to driving, there is nothing more distracting than using your cell phone. You can improve your chances of not getting into an accident by putting your phone away before the car starts moving. Take the advice of this one unlucky guy. I am.
am one unlucky guy. The chances of being involved in a robbery is one in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning. One in 750,000. The chances of being in an airline crash is one in 29 million. Hey, can I get some peanuts? Chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes, plane crashes, and if you text while driving, your risk increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of those statistics, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. CPR is an emergency procedure that involves chest compressions and is used when a person is unable to breathe on their own. You may have seen lifeguards do this by the pool, but how do you perform CPR yourself? Watch this next clip to find out. Hello, welcome, and my name is Jade. I'll be your host today. Have you ever witnessed an accident and no one was around? And you didn't know what to do if someone needed your help? Well, instead of being clueless and just standing around, you can learn how to perform CPR and next time you can help save a life. Now to my assistant, Blaine. Thanks, Jay. Hi, my name is Blaine, and today I will be teaching you how to perform CPR. First, you must step back and understand what's happening. If the person is holding their chest like this, make sure that while they're falling, that you're able to catch them so they don't experience further head or body injuries. Next, you must check if the person is able to respond. You can do that by approaching the person closely and asking a question like, are you okay? Like this, are you okay? If the person is unresponsive, it's important that you call 911. If you don't have a cell phone, you point to a bystander and you ask them to call 911. Like this, you call 911. Next, you must check if the person is breathing. This part is critical, so pay attention. First, you need to open the airway. You can do that by placing your hand on the person's forehead and the other hand under the person's chin. Then gently lift up the head. Now the airways are open. Then check for breathing. You can do this by listening. Do not do this for more than 10 seconds. Since the person is not breathing, now we need to perform CPR. If the person is lying on their side, make sure that you lay them flat on their back. Then put one hand on top of the other and interlock them like this. Then place both hands on the center of the victim's chest. Then begin pushing two inches deep into the person's chest. Make sure that you use the weight of your body like this. Remember, consistency is key, so keep doing this uninterrupted until help arrives. Remember, there are three categories for performing CPR, adult, child, and infant. Techniques performed on adults could harm the child or infant because of their softer bone structure. After 30 compressions, if you're trained in mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, go ahead with two rescue breaths. If you are unwilling or unable to perform mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing, make sure to continuously compress the center of the chest at a rate of 100 beats per minute. Use the tempo of the song, Stayin' Alive, by the Bee Gees to know what rate you perform the compression. And that's it! I hope you'll use these tips to help potentially save a life one day. Back to you, Jade! Thank you, Blaine. Now, in emergency situations, I will know what to do. It's really important to be prepared because you never know what life is going to throw at you. I hope you found this useful, and if you want to be even more prepared, you can become certified by taking a class at your local CPR center. Goodbye! Another great way to improve your overall health is to get into the habit of making healthier life choices. Layla Swenson has a few tips and tricks that can help you get into the habit of living a healthier life. Well, my video, um, health has always been a very personal um, issue to me and how health is declining. So um, this was a really good opportunity for me to let other people know what I figured out about health personally. 
I'd like people to learn how to be healthier and how to live a healthier life and how to start early so that they can have an easier time to be healthy later. Nowadays, it would seem that everyone wants to be healthier, and yet rates of obesity continue to go up every year. By 2020, 50% of adults in America are predicted to be overweight. So how do we prevent this epidemic that is sweeping over America? We can start healthy habits early so it's easier for us to stay healthy as adults. Here are five ways that we can start to develop healthy habits early. First, have a healthy sleep schedule. Go to bed and wake up at a consistent time that fits your schedule. Second, participate in after-school sports such as soccer, football, basketball, and track. Third, drink enough water. About 75% of Americans are dehydrated. Fourth, eat healthy. Eat plenty of fruits and vegetables and have a balanced diet. And fifth and finally, don't stress. 49% of high schoolers in a study from 2015 said that they felt stressed every day. And when we stress, we're not healthy. Quick, do you know what to do in the event of a fire? Well, stop what you're doing, drop that remote, and listen up, because we're about to roll the next clip. I'm teaching people what to do if the house is on fire and what stuff they need to know. You need to have a steady hand, which I don't have, but I try. You need to speak kind of loud so you can be heard on the camera. Guess what time it is? That's right, it's time to learn what to do if your house is on fire! <laughs> Let's go into my house so I can show you! What's with the crazy eye? I heard you were talking about fire safety and I wanted to help. Alright then, let's get to work! Okay Maddie, what's the first thing you need to know when the house is on fire? Fire. What do you do? 
You get a ladder and climb up the window. But where do you get the ladder from? How am I supposed to know? You can buy a fire escape ladder and keep it next to the upstairs window. are one of the dirtiest parts of your body. Think about it, you use them for just about everything you do throughout the day. They attract germs like magnets. Don't believe me? Check out this PSA from Sutter Middle School. I learned how to overlay the green screen correctly and how to input everything on the TriCaster so I could do that a little bit better. My favorite part was screaming at the camera because when I was screaming at the camera, everyone else had to be quiet and it was pretty fun. Quit touching your face! Here's what I mean. Look at this kid. He's resting on his face. Those germs are way too close to his face. Now let's look at what he did earlier today. On the way back to class, he brushed the locks with his hand, collecting others' germs. Do you know what's on those locks? Number 306, Sally rode the bus holding onto the handrails. Who else has touched those handrails earlier? Number 307, Jimmy picked his nose. Number 308, Luke threw up on his hands. And number 309, Jeremy picked gum off his shoe. You don't know who's touched what you've touched. Stay healthy. Keep germs away from your eyes, mouth, and nose. Smoking can have some seriously negative effects on your body. It's not only bad for your lungs, but it can damage other bodily functions as well. Take a look at this PSA from Franklin High School and learn why you should be smoke-free. For our last video today, we'll be heading over to Heron School to take a look at a PSA about why it's important to always wear a helmet while riding a bike. My name is Aiden Rico, I go to Heron School and my video is always wear your helmet. My favorite part was filming, definitely. I want people to learn that even if you don't think that a helmet is cool or you don't think it looks good or you just think that you don't need it, you should always wear it just in case. Well, that's all the time we have for today's episode of SIVA TV. If you'd like to see more student videos or want to find out how you can enter into the SIVAs, check out our website at seccv.org. I'm Kelly Caps. Thanks for watching.